President Bola Tinubu has charged ministers to look beyond titles and offices and stay focused on the day-to-day -day task of their individual and collective contributions to the transformation of the economy for the upliftment of Nigerian households. President Tinubu told the new ministers at the inaugural Federal Executive Council meeting that the country would rely on the experience, skill, intellect, and networking of those that had been appointed to make headway in the challenging times. And failure would not be explained away under his watch. TVC News State House correspondent Femi Akonde has details. The first inaugural Federal Executive Council meeting to draw the roadmap for economic growth and national development. With high expectations and a clear target set by President Bola Tinubu, the road ahead will definitely be long and tough. The ministers will work out how the country can wriggle out of a debt crisis that is serviced with about 90% of the country's revenue. To reform the economy to deliver sustainable and inclusive growth, strengthen national security for peace and prosperity, Without security, there can be no investment. We must unlock the energy and natural resources of this country. We must start to pro produce for ourselves. After the meeting of the Federal Executive Council, ministers disclosed the outcome of their deliberations and the resolutions reached. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy is driving the charge to revamp the economy and to do so without resorting to external borrowing. And those are basically food security, ending poverty, economic growth and job creation, access to capital, particularly consumer credit, improving security, improving the playing field on which people and particularly companies operate, rule of law, and of course, fighting corruption. The bias is towards action, so we get things done. I think it's very clear that the president wants us to domesticate our efforts within our own national context but also to be very practical in the interventions that we make. And with those marching orders, we now have our work cut out for us and will continue to define as the coordinating minister of the economy indicated. The Federal Executive Council meeting examined the president's eight key priority areas that will be the base upon which this administration will develop a plan to stimulate growth and development. The mandate for the ministers across sectors is to create more jobs, ensure food security, and improve the well-being of citizens. Mr. President, for the first two, uh, during his campaign, he promised 50 million jobs, and that's our target. And you know, we will take it in phases. We are looking at different sectors of the economy that will contribute to this job creation. Chief among them is the creative industry and the digital economy, and then the agri sector, an agro-processing zone, and mining oil and gas. So we are very, very confident that we will achieve this. As um, cabinet members, we have made our commitments to Mr. President, and um, I'm sure he's equally pleased with the kind of commitments that we have uh, laid out today. And um, God willing, we should be able to achieve those targets within the shortest possible time. The days ahead will be tough as time begins to count. The performance of the ministers will be closely watched by President Bola Tinubu and the impact of the policy execution will be measured by Nigerians. Femi Akonde, TVC News, Abuja. Well, joining us in the studio is a political analyst, Biodun Shoumi. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Right. Uh, the president said that uh, the action and perhaps an action of the ministers, especially uh, with regards to the statement he has made, 
and that the lives of 200 million Nigerians rest on their action and inaction. Basically, that's where I wanted to take it from. And I'm wondering how critical it was for him to make this statement, give this matching others, and now we have three years to see uh, this minister's act. Uh, it's, it's quite um, very critical for Mr. President to actually send out the signals to the ministers on his expectations. Um, it shows he actually clearly has a, a good understanding of the expectations of Nigerians and also uh, the problems the Nigerian people are going through. When you look at his major step, which is to clearly define you know, what are the priorities for this very administration, one is that we need to ensure you know, we revive the economy, mm. you know, give new hope you know, to people, um, free resources with a view to invest in the critical sectors of the economy, which includes education, agriculture, you know, um, provide them um, conducive economic climate you know, for investment, you know, attract foreign direct investment also into the economy. And this cannot be achieved without security, which clearly um, it seems to have a good grasp of that, look, we need to change the narrative from negotiating with terrorists or arranging for their freedom uh, into uh, uh, tackling you know, banditry and terrorism of from which clearly is um, uh, chiefs, um, military chiefs have indicated clearly and they've gone after uh, the terrorists. And then straight down to the issue of social inclusion. Yeah. So you see the link between its attempts to revive the economy you know, by taking critical steps such as freeing resources through subsidies, you know, then merging the exchange rate system to eliminate, you know, those who are exploiting um, the exchange rate, um, the dual exchange rate system, and then free resources to be able to invest into the economy right down to ensuring that there's security and then social inclusion um, in the country. It's not just about, you know, a section of the country, is talking about the entire country. That is, we need to have a combined and even development across the board um, so that everybody will be stakeholders you know, in the country, irrespective of where they live. And these are very positive messages you know, uh, to give out right at the onset. I know the regime is at its infancy, mm -hmm. but sending out those positive signals could help people to focus on how the regime or what the regime intends to do and help foreign uh, direct investors also to clearly understand the direction um, of this administration. Right. Uh, so, um, eight point agenda, and um, all of this agenda, all of these, uh, the agenda or the agenda are quite very, you know, significant to the betterment of this country. Uh, looking at the uh, food security, United Nations World Food Program and Food Agriculture Organization said that they predicted that over 25 million Nigerians may face acute hunger at the peak of the lean season. Uh, you know, talk about between June and uh, to, to August. We also have the impact of climate change, which is also impacting the ecosystem, you know, flooding and all of that. How do you think this administration can, you know, ta you know tackle the, uh, the food crisis in the country? Yes, um, we need to put these issues in context, irrespective of what um, the international bodies um, actually say. Last year, we had a very bad... Um, rainfall in the country. Yeah. Many farmers planted at the end of March, the planting, planting season. Um, after two weeks, the rain stopped and they lost every single thing. Um, we had the same problem in October, the second planting season, um, with nothing. So we have very poor, you know, um, heart put, you know, from farming um, last year. So that certainly will impact on what is going on this year. In addition to the fact that we also have security problems, uh, challenges in Bama some areas like uh, in, in the middle belt, mm -hmm. uh, which is the breadbasket you know, of the country. So when you look at all these issues and put them in context, you know we have a problem. But this year, we've seen a change. There seems to be an improved, better rainfall. Yes, we still have ecological problems such as flooding and some other issues, but I don't think it will be as bad as that, given the intervention being done by the federal government on two sides. The first one is on intervention through the release of um, grains from the National Reserve you know, into 
for, for planting, you know, by farmers. Mm. That's very, very critical because um, we will not be able to produce more than enough. Now that we know that we are likely going to have a very good second planting season in October. So the government is taking initiative to help farmers, you know, to plant um, the, their crops again. Mm. The most important thing is take grain, which is maize, take maize off the forex table, then you solve half of the problems, you know, in the agricultural sector. And I will tell you why. Maize is very critical. It accounts for 60% of what is used to produce um, uh, feeds for poultry That's products. Yeah. So we, uh, when you look at other things like PAP, you know, all the derivatives from maize alone, you will be, you know, contributing enormously to increasing productivity, improving the nutrition of Nigerians. And that is what the government has tried to do. The other angle to it now is the issue of um, blue economy. Um, I listened, I read something about what the government intends to do about the flood. One is to temporarily relocate people um, to up, 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 upland, uh, but at the same time, in the medium term, look at how to develop the rivers. You know, we know that we have 20 million liters of water that will be coming through. And what we need to do is dredge the rivers, you know, to make sure that we have capacity for 40 million liters, and then, you know, create an economy around it, uh, which uh, it's part of what the government is trying to do through blue economy. We are yet, yet to fully see the whole thing, but these are positive, you know, indicators. Yes. And when you look at the fact that we can tap that flood, what they call the flood, we can tap it for the benefit of the economy. Nation. We don't just keep thinking is a problem. We have to look at how do we use it so you know, to advantage. help the farmers, even in the, look, in, in, in the rural areas. Irrigation and all. Irrigation. You can you do irrigation and do all that. We don't need to remove communities. What we need to do is to dredge, expand the river and dredge you know, deeper with a view to contain more water so that it won't become a problem for us. It's not about the damming, you know, damming that uh, river bene. No, that's not what we need to do. And the government is thinking right in that direction, if I get it right from what I read. So we can create another economy around these rivers, was, which we currently we view yeah. as a problem. They are not a problem. They are also opportunities you know, for government to expand the economy. Makes sense. I interesting. Now, it's obvious that uh, the ministers have their KPIs mm. already on the table for them now as it is, and KPAs, Key Performance index indicators. And indicators, as well as actions that they have to hit the ground running with in three years. And we are talking about 50 million jobs in three years. The question is, how is the government going to achieve that? Because some persons have said that this is quite a blanket statement, so to speak. How do we break it down to ensure it is measurable and then we can hold these persons to account. How do we define underperformance in all of these processes? Because the, the, the president has said that he's not going to entertain underperformance as and anyone who does that will be shown the door, so to speak. So how do you see the government ensuring that it breaks down all of these issues that Nigerians can hold people to account? The first problem is um, resource constraint. Yeah. The president has been able to resolve that through removal of subsidies. Yes, it has inflicted some pains on Nigerians, but these are, you know, necessary pains that is like going through a child lab um, labor. At the end of the day, is the outcome that matters. When you have a new baron, new baby, you forget about the pains. Now, we are in a situation where the country is almost at a standstill, almost prostrate from, uh, uh, from overborrowing by past administrations and all manners of uh, uh, manipulations of the economy for individual gains. Now we are coming out of that. We need the resources. The president has been able to free that. So what we need to do is to invest properly in the economy. And that will lead to job creation. No doubt about it. You can imagine the funds that will be available now. We learned about 1.8 trillion within uh, less than three months. You know, to, to invest in education, mm -hmm. not only in education, you know, you're looking at other critical sectors of the economy, health. you know, agriculture, health, and all that. And if we're able to invest in all those sectors, we'll be, you know, employing people. We'll be creating new jobs mm -hmm. where we don't have them at all. Um, look at the, the, the blue economy, you know, which 
centers around the exploitation of resources around the ocean. A lot of resources are being filtered currently. Mm -hmm. Chief uh, fishing uh, vessels are moving into our own territorial waters, exploiting our fishes. They take it abroad and then again, they export it back to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And then we end up you know, uh, paying unnecessary to using our foreign exchange for what actually belongs to us in the first instance. And that is why having such a ministry to coordinate the activities in that sector alone, which would lead to you know, hundreds of thousands of jobs. You can imagine having a shipping line, how many people that will be engaged in that process, including other, you know, facilities, you know, attached, the value chain attached to shipping line. So there are a lot of jobs opportunities that can be created. Now we're talking about roads. The federal government will have no excuse not to construct roads. We've already seen the minister um, responsible for works, David yeah, Mahi, moving around, because there is now new money which has been freed, you know, uh, um, uh, for, for, for development of the country. Now, what you see is that by the time you embark on road construction across the whole federation, you will be creating, you know, hundreds of thousands of jobs, you know, for people within the economy. The issue of digital economy is also there. Yeah. And it's likely, you know, um, focused on the youth to yeah. help the youth develop their own economy. Uh, because you can see how they use Twitter now X, yeah. I think it's called X now, um, uh, to trade. And people are making a lot of money through that. So if we expand the capacity of the economy, you know, to create jobs uh, through digital uh, marketing, uh, then we'll be creating thousands of jobs. You can imagine the, the, when you liberate the energies of our youth, you can imagine the number of jobs that they will create. What the government, in my view, is trying to do is to act as an enabler to create you know, the enabling environment, right. mm. you know, for this oh, youth to be to able try. to mm. develop their own businesses and expand the economy. Uh, it's part of uh, what they're trying to do in addition to other steps being taken in the agricultural sector. Our Greek alone accounts for about 70 to 80 percent of our GDP. It's not oil, contrary to what people think. So if we're able to sustain investment in agriculture, which would lead to massive you know, employment, and people returning back to the farms, then we'll be going a long way to create jobs, not only in the former sector, but also in the informal sector. So in my view, even if they can achieve that target, I mean, you're looking at, if you're able to achieve 75%, you know, that's distinction. You don't necessarily need to have 100%. 100%. Well, uh, over the years, this, this current administration is also looking to end poverty. But we know over the years in the past administration, there has always been poverty alleviation programs. Uh, but the more they try to end poverty, the more other things come up that pull, uh, you know, uh, pushes people more into you know, poverty experiences. Um, what do you think they really can do this time around uh, to formulating policies or bringing you know, the strategies they can bring to table uh, to ensure that poverty, you know, is stamped out, uh, stamped out. If it is not, at least to, to be brought to, uh, you know, a very Paris reduced minimal. level. When you look at any country, you have people with extreme poverty, you have people who are poverty stricken, you have the well-off. In Nigeria, we have the problem of extreme poverty, but extreme poverty has been brought to a point that it was no longer a major problem. But now it is a major problem because we have inherited it um, from a series of activities, not only local problems, but also international problems. Multidimensional. It's okay. multidimensional. You remember the issue of um, uh, uh, COVID-19. Yeah. Mm. It created its own problem. Mm. The whole world inherited The effect is still, that. the impact has, is still being felt. Absolutely. Yeah. The whole world inherited that. So since we are part of the global community, we are badly affected by it. But that we also have our own local peculiarities, you know, our own local problem, corruption, uh, the issue of uh, multiple exchange rate, you know, the unfriendly investment climate. Uh, you have the issue of uh, double taxation or multiple taxation. Yeah. These are all issues that need to be addressed. So in, with the view to create jobs, the only way you can eliminate property, uh, poverty, whether it's extreme or poverty, is to get people to start working. Either they work through the firms or they work 
in any former sector. Mm. Uh, one of the things which government can do, again, is to revisit our industrial policy. Mm. When that is done, industries can create thousands and hundreds of thousands of jobs, mm. rather than emphasizing on services industry, mm. um, which uh, capacity is a bit limited. When all the refineries are back working, we will see you know, a, a significant improvement in the lives of the people, because currently, all the associated industries, you know, products um, associated with um, uh, refining oil um, are not being produced. So therefore, it has also created part of the problem. So but what government is trying to do, in my view, if it is done and well coordinated, it would lead to a reduction in people living with extreme poverty. We might be able to move people up the ladder. There is no country in the world where you don't have poverty whether you talk about Britain or US, is the level that we need to bring down. Those who are badly affected more now are people living in the rural areas who are not in the former sectors of the economy. And those are the people which I think the increase and the promised investment in agriculture will help you know, a lot. It will take many people out of extreme poverty. That's right. Interesting. Uh, quickly, before we uh, wrap up this conversation, uh, the ministers have their work cut out for them. And uh, the question is, how tough do you think the days ahead will be for them? Ensuring, seeing that um, Nigerians are waiting for them to deliver on what the, the president has said. It's not going to be easy at all. You are talking about a situation where 90% of the resources are being used to service um, um, debts, while at the same time we have been able to live, the, the country has been able to liberate new resources by removing subsidies. The funds will be available, no doubt about that. We've seen the indicator. But what matters most is that government needs to act very fast to reduce the problem. I don't necessarily think that palliative is a solution mm. because people are experiencing pains and. Uh, groaning in pains in, as a result of steps taken by the government. Mm. I think the government should remain focused and abandon the issue of quality. It's not going to be a long-term solution. In the medium term or even short, short term, term, we should be focusing on you know, reviving all the refineries, increasing investment in agriculture. Mm. Um, we should also look at the issue of education and then you know, look at the issue of mass transportation. Mm. Those will help the economy better because if we give palliatives, no matter the palliatives you give now, it will not, not solve the problem. It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. Right. And what you see is that the labor union will continue to put pressure, keep asking for more and more. The, there's a minimum wage review is yeah. due early next year. And government can look at that and see, look, how much have we saved? How All much right. of it can we pass on to workers so that uh, we can reinflate the economy and get things to be more stable? All right, and that's a fine place to leave the conversation this morning. You don't show me political analyst. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Right. Thank you. This is where we draw the curtains on the program for today. Let's